Hey yo, and what is up, gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV tonight. The WWE wants you to believe that Monday Night Raw is as bad as it is, all because of Baron Constable Dickhead Corbin. And while there is some little bit of truth to that, we all know who really is to blame, and we are going to bring the hammer down on that 74-year-old son of a bitch right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare, and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's Monday Night Raw Review. Let's do it. <laughs> Wrestling fans, thank you so much once again for joining me. You know, I cannot help but believe that Vince McMahon wrote that promo that Seth Rollins delivered tonight at the open of Monday Night Raw while looking in a fucking mirror, having his Twitter page open, reading all the comments that every single one of us with a working brain have been throwing all over social media all week long, all of the universal criticisms, everything that you've read, everything that you've said and I've said and anybody on YouTube has said pretty much has been thrown back in our faces. And while, yes, they are acknowledging the problem and they are taking their top star and their most popular character and putting him out there as our voice, that should be a cool moment, right? You would think that would be cool. Wow, Seth Rollins is talking about some real shit. Right? They're bringing reality into wrestling. This is going to get interesting, right? That's all well and good. But what good is acknowledging the problem if immediately following that acknowledgement, we get the same bullshit show that we get every fucking Monday night? They made zero steps to correct any of their mistakes. They made zero progression forward in making this show even a microcosm better than the way it has been throughout all of 2018, never mind the last three weeks. Maybe it just feels like these last three weeks have been so bad because for the last 52 weeks, or as we're coming up at the end of the year, almost 52 weeks, it has been this dreadful. There really is not one show that stands out over any other one as being the worst show. This is just the worst year of Monday Night Raw in the history of Monday Night Raw. And the numbers and the ratings prove it. And they want to take all of that and use it tonight and tell everybody and have Seth Rollins. <laughs> yeah, this is the worst show ever and it's all because of Baron Corbin. No, it's not. We all know what reason it is. It's Vince McMahon's fault. This is the go-home show for TLC, and this old man booked a TLC match for the Intercontinental Championship six days before the major pay-per-view where TLC matches should be taking place. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? If you're doing this to show people what's going to happen at a TLC pay-per-view, then why the fuck do you even have a TLC pay-per-view? If you were interested in seeing a TLC match, you have absolutely zero reason now to tune in on Sunday. You have zero reason to purchase the WWE Network. You have zero reason to look forward to anything. Because you've just seen it. That's for those of you who've never seen it before. For those of us who have seen TLC matches and know the way this company has been in the past, we're sitting here thinking, why are we getting a TLC match on Monday Night Raw? Oh, for the first time in six years. And I guarantee you the last time, it probably wasn't before a TLC pay-per-view. It was probably just randomly thrown in there to bump the ratings at some point. Maybe it was following a TLC pay-per-view, a rematch of some sort, but Six days removed from the show, you're going to give us an Intercontinental Championship TLC match. But at the TLC pay-per-view, you're having the Intercontinental Championship defended in a one-on-one -on -one match. No stipulation added to it. Nothing to make it more intriguing. Nothing to make it worth watching. 
the Intercontinental Championship and ladder match is two words, two phrases rather, that go together like peanut butter and jelly. They just collide together and make delicious, beautiful music. How many classics have we seen? Not just the first couple with Sean and Razor, but we've had The Rock and Triple H going at it, and there are countless other ladder matches for the Intercontinental Championship. Money in the Bank ladder matches that are hanging up above the ring for people to go up and seize the moment. Something worth fighting for. But they want to give a ladder match to Bobby Lashley and Elias. And they're going to have a guitar hung up above the ring, suspended high above. The first person to get the guitar gets to use it. Why not call this match what it is? This is the guitar on the pole match. What have I been telling you guys for weeks? The WWE right now is echoing and is reeking the stench of really bad WCW booking. And in order to really stay away from that, instead of putting the guitar on a pole, they're hanging a guitar from the... Uh, suspending it from the top of the arena like a title belt. Do you know how long a guitar is? A decent-sized guitar is at least two and a half to three feet long. That's so far down. What, are they going to use a step stool to get up there and reach the fucking guitar? I would have been more interested if they hung Leo Rush up by his feet, upside down, above the ring, and the first person that gets him down gets to keep him. That would be a reason to watch them in a fucking ladder match. Not to go up and get a guitar. And that's not just the musician in me that hates seeing guitars be broken on national television. I hate it. I hated it when Honky Tonk did it. I hate it when Jeff Jarrett did it. I hate it when Elias does it. Because guitars are beautiful things that should not be destroyed. Just like Monday Night Raw, once upon a time, was a beautiful thing that should not be destroyed. But on a weekly basis, it is destroyed just as much as it was the previous week. I can't say this week was better than last week. Was it worse? No. We've hit the bottom of the barrel, and we are staying there. We are ice skating on top of the shit that the WWE has just been complacent to stay on top of. Well, here's where we're at. We're just going to stay here. We're going to give you the almost the exact same card that we have given you guys over the last three weeks that have been considered among the worst of the worst by almost everybody in the world, from major news outlets to Sala Monster to JD to right here on your favorite wrestling show, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show. The world has been shitting on them, and they did nothing tonight. Nothing to make it any better. Were you excited for a TLC match? Or did reason hit you in the face? Were you struck by common sense? And did you wonder like I did, why the fuck are they doing this now? Only to make it worse with a countless number of mistakes and rematches and bullshit that nobody was interested in. Were you interested in anything Natalia had to come out and cry about? I am absolutely sympathetic to the fact that she has lost her father. I watched Jim DeAnville Neidhart come out at SummerSlam 1990. I've seen him at his best. I've seen him in the ring at his worst. I've seen him do all types of things, and I have nothing but love and respect for Jim the Anvil Neidhart. But them using him the way they did tonight after recently passing is just kind of distasteful. It runs the same lines that they are running by using Roman Reigns and his leukemia. It's the same type of shit. You're trying to gain more pity and more sympathy and more heat on Ruby Riot, who can get heat without using a printed visage of Jim the Anvil Neidhart on a wooden table to try to sell this tables match between these two ladies. Didn't Natalya beat Ruby Riot and gain a measure of vengeance for breaking these fucking sunglasses? Why is she still crying about the glasses? It's making me want to cry right now. It's fucking ridiculous. And don't be a nimrod and buy into this shit. First of all, segments like this do not go down without the permission of a Natalia Neidhart. She knew damn well what was on that table. There was no surprise of it. This is a written wrestling TV show. We all know this. But it's not shocking. It's ridiculous. 
this is going to be what puts this match over the top for everybody. There's going to be a table at ringside with Jim the Anvil Neidhart's body on it. You want to do that, but you don't want to take two seconds tonight to acknowledge the passing of Larry the Axe Henning. You know, his grandson is employed in this company, but they don't want to take two minutes to to give the respect to him, nor did they want to mention the passing of the Dynamite Kid this week. You talk about a company that has no respect for wrestling. Those are two of the greatest wrestlers of all time. What a fucking joke this company has become. I don't understand that move. Curtis Axel's probably sitting at home like, why don't they care about Grandpa? Well, sorry, Curtis. They don't care about anything on this show. They don't care about the women's division. They don't care about the tag team division. They don't care about the script because they just keep using the same one. Just cutting and pasting little differences here and there. And they're barely differences at that. Look at all the same shit we had this week. We had a segment with Natty and Ruby. We had Ember versus Tamina with Ronda Rousey and Nia Jax outside the ring. Just like the two-on-two situations we've been seeing them in over the last couple of weeks. We've seen the rematch between Dolph Ziggler versus Drew McIntyre. Elias got beat down by Bobby Trashley again. Bailey versus Alicia Fox for the umpteenth fucking thousand time. And who cares? Did you care about anything you've seen tonight? Please give me one reason why I should have. Why should I have given a shit? Why? Because we didn't see the Lucha House Party tonight? I'll take that as a win. We don't need to see them. But you want to give me, in a tag team division, you want to give a win. You want to give the tag team championships to Bobby fucking Roode and Chad Gable now. Now you want to give it to them after they've been pissed on, literally and figuratively, by the authors of Piss and Drake Mav Piss over the last three weeks. Over the last couple of months, these guys couldn't buy a fucking win. Now there are tag team champions of the world, but you got the fucking Revival losing to Lucha House rules every fucking week. This is okay to you. The Authors of Pain losing the championships in a three-on-two handicap match by Drake fucking Maverick getting pinned in the middle of the ring. That's okay with you. The Authors of Pain are the new fucking Ascension. They're not even trying with them, nor do they care. Vince McMahon is using the NXT playground as a friggin' joke factory for his stand-up routine that he wants to put up in front of us every Monday. The show is a joke. It makes me angry to even watch every second of this show. Well, why do you watch it? Because I love wrestling. And I'm waiting with every single Monday to see some type of a change because it just can't possibly stay this bad, can it? It seems kind of stupid for me to say that when we've sat through an entire year of this dog shit, but it has to come to an end. It has to come to an end, and I want to be there when it does, so I'm not going to miss a thing. That's what a real fan does. And I come here on this show to give you guys my opinion... That's what this is, this is my opinion on everything that I saw, and you are free to agree or disagree at your convenience. But I know most of my fans, I know most of you guys that are going to comment on this video are going to be down there telling me, damn Nick, you are right. We felt the same way that you did because I am a wrestling fan too, and I am not a fucking idiot, and I am tired of being treated like an idiot. Week after week after week. And I love to come here and listen to you say these things because you, sir, make me not feel like an idiot. And that's how I feel about you guys. When I see your comments and I see the things that you guys have to say about Monday Night Raw and they are all echoing or along the same lines of what I am feeling and what I am saying, I know that I'm not crazy. And you know who is crazy? The WWE. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. And that's what Monday Night Raw has become. It's just straight insanity. Every week, the same situations, the same combinations, and nothing changes. 
Baron Corbin, six fucking times tonight. Every time his stupid bald head hits that TV screen, I want to leave my house. Never mind change the channel. I just want to leave. I want to put on my shoes and my jacket. And like, fuck this. I'm out of here with this guy. I don't know why you guys in the arena that go to see these shows don't do the same thing. You don't have to leave the arena. But I think a good thing for fans to do would be to just get out of your seat and everybody go hit the hallway. Everybody go buy fucking snacks. Everybody go hit the restroom. You aren't going to miss a thing if Baron Corbin is in the ring with a microphone in his hand. So why don't we try that little experiment? Next time you go to a live show, try to get everybody in your section. Hey, everybody, let's all go get some fucking hot dogs. Everybody, let's, let's do a visual protest that the WWE will not be able to cut away from. Everybody, get the fuck up and go to the lobby in protest of the garbage that you are being given on this show. And then while you are in that lobby, don't leave the arena. Just keep chanting, this show sucks. Demand your fucking money back. Do something to show this company that this shit just isn't right anymore because the ratings going down the tube week after week isn't sending the right message. You either have to stop going completely. They don't give a shit about that either. You guys have seen the pictures on social media. They got big sections all blacked out in tarps. They strategically place the camera in angles and positions so that you don't see all of the empty fucking seats. This is truth that I speak to you. If you don't believe me, go look and find the pictures yourselves. You can find them on Google very easily. Or just look at some Monday Night Raw Twitter feed On a random Monday, somebody that's there live from the show will be tweeting the actual size of the crowd. But that's not sending the right message either. So what we have to do is find a way to stand against it. And the only way we can do that right now is gathering here on channels like mine and people of the like-minded and and voice our frustrations, which is what we do here. So if you don't like what I'm saying, and if you think I'm just a complainer, and if you think I'm bitching and moaning, then this isn't the show for you. Go listen to other people that like to suck the WWE balls and expect to maybe one day be working for Vince McMahon and have these pipe dreams that will never come true. And and enjoy that show. And give them our regards. and, And I wish you well there, and I wish them all the success in the world. But this is not the show for you because here we bring the hammer down. This is the hammer of reality. The hammer of reason. The hammer of truth. Because I'm not a fucking idiot and neither are you. But this show thinks we're idiots. You want to hype up Lars Sullivan like he's the second coming of I don't know who. And then you're going to bring him up to the main roster and you're going to Bobby Roode him all the way down to the bottom of the barrel. Which is where Raw firmly resides. What else do I got written down here? That's pretty much it for my opening statement. All of these fucking things that they did tonight were just more of the same old WWE Raw Bullshit. Let's run down this card quickly before my brain explodes. I can't even take this shit anymore, you guys. I can't. And if you guys are one of my fans that don't watch Monday Night Raw, but are a wrestling fan and come to see my my way of thinking and, and me have you know what happened tonight and fill you in on what happened on the show, guys, you didn't miss a fucking thing. You didn't miss a thing. If you didn't watch the go-home show tonight, you can watch on Sunday and you'll be up to speed. Because nothing new happened. Nothing of note happened. And the only thing I can hope is that somehow, someway, the WWE's plan is to bring back Braun Strowman at this fucking pay-per-view, which they're still advertising Braun Strowman to be in this match with Baron Corbin, and have him beat Baron Corbin with one arm to make sure that this man is not going to be the permanent general manager. You want to put the death kiss on this show, you give him the permanent general managership. I don't even care if there's a new one. Don't have a general manager at all. Just go with the commissioner. Let it be an off-screen thing. 
Have Stephanie, as much as I hate even saying this, have her show up every fucking once in a while to restore order where need be, but have her run things from far away, like the raw anonymous general manager. We Let's go back to that. I'll take the fucking bloops and the sound effects and the blinking lights over everything we got fucking going on right now. And I can't believe I'm even saying that because I hated that part, that part of Monday Night Raw's history. I thought that was one of the worst points it was ever at. But now we find ourselves here and I'm longing for the Raw General Manager to be an anonymous fucking bleep. Don't you? Would you rather have Mike Adamley back? The worst Raw General Manager of all time on screen anyway. Until Cor- Constable Corbin dickhead. Awful. Vince McMahon, you could blame Baron Corbin all you want. The reason Baron Corbin is where he is is because you put him there, sir. And it is time, in fact, for you to step down and go home. Why don't you go focus on the XFL and leave the wrestling to the people that know how to do wrestling still. Talk about somebody being out of touch with the product. There is no one more out of touch with a product that they produce than Vincent Kennedy McMahon. And I say that to you with 100% fire and heart. And I mean every word of it. I love Vince McMahon. He gave me this business. But there's a time for everything to come to an end. Seth Rollins started off this show as we talked to you guys about calling out Baron Corbin saying he's not going to stand for this. <laughs> yeah. Burn it down. Yeah. How many times did they have the burn it down fucking play in the opening segment? I thought they ruined Seth Rollins theme song, but thank God when he came out later in the night, that was not the case. It was for some reason just played four or five times at the open of tonight's show, which I thought was weird. Didn't matter what he had to say, really. He was echoing every single one of our sentiments towards Baron Corbin, who came out to confront the Intercontinental Champion. They ended up booking themselves into this TLC match after Corbin initially refused, but then, you know, was baited into it because Seth Rollins called him a coward. 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 That's what got this fucking man hot enough to get in the ring in a TLC match and hopefully get the Intercontinental Championship. Which I thought, why would they do this? There's not one reason for them to have Seth Rollins drop the title to Baron Corbin tonight with the exception of absolutely infuriating everybody to no end, even more so than they have been lately. So I did not expect that to be the case, although they did tease it a little bit. I did not for one minute think that was going to happen. So that's how the show opened up. And then we get the three-on-two handicap match where the Glorious Gables defeat the Authors of Piss. whoop the fucking do This isn't the first time this has ever happened. The tag team championship being decided in a three-on-two handicap match. Nor will it be the last time, but this is definitely one of the rare times that it has happened that it has made absolutely no sense and, to me, has damaged everybody involved. Even Bobby Roode and Chad Gable coming out on top don't look that great because you didn't beat the Authors of Pain. You beat Drake Maverick. And now you call yourselves the tag team champions. You're proud of that. You're celebrating that win. You stole the championships away from them. What part of you guys don't think they're going to get them back probably by next Monday night? Or there'll be an impromptu rematch announced for TLC this Sunday. Probably on the pre-show where it'll be winner takes all and gets to pee on the other person's foot. Who the fuck knows and who cares? At this point. I certainly don't. Absolutely fucking ridiculous. We had Natalia doing her promo. She came to the ring talking about how she loved the business. And Ruby Riot doesn't respect anything. Ruby Riot disrespected her family. And now... Oh, and why is she bringing up Bret Hart and the Montreal Screwjob? All of that just seemed to be placed there in a lazy attempt by the writing staff to get everybody's attention. 
Oh, they're talking about the screw job. We have to listen. Oh, let's cheer Natty because she's reminding us of something that was fucking awesome. That was horrible. There was nothing good about that. That one fucking night sent everything into a downward spiral for Brett the Hitman Hart. And you want to look back and celebrate that night as if it was something fucking special? It was probably one of the darkest hours of the WWE. Because all of it was 100% real. They screwed over a man that did nothing but bust his ass for them for over almost 20 years. And now you want to look back at the Montreal Screwjob like it's something to be fucking proud of? Why are we talking about this? Oh, we got to get Natty over. Let's remind everybody that she's Brett's nephew. Uh, niece, rather. Never mind she's Jim the Anvil Neidhart's daughter. Do you think a lot of the modern day audience gives two shits about Jim the Anvil Neidhart? No disrespect intended, because like I said earlier, I love Jim the Anvil Neidhart, but I'm 41 fucking years old. Some of you guys my age will relate. You'll know Jim the Anvil Neidhart. You'll remember the, the beard pull and the laugh and, and the Hart Foundation and then the new foundation and then when he showed up in the in the Hart Foundation stable in the 90s. And then most of today's fans, they don't know who he is. Their only exposure to him has been the few cameos he's made on Total Divas. So they have no investment in him. That's why there was barely a reaction to Natalia at all. And then they pull the, the curtain off of the table. Ruby reveals Jim the Anvil Neidhart. And there was a ooh from the crowd. Ooh. There's a picture of her dad. That's so riotous. It's ridiculous. It's disrespectful. I'm sure Natty's like, oh, well, my dad would have loved this. He loved the business. He would have loved to still be part of it after his passing, which is... I agree with that, but come on, how cheap can you be? Apparently very, TMZ levels of fucking cheap. Drew McIntyre gets his win back on Dolph Ziggler. These guys went at it last week, Dolph Ziggler gets the win and I was absolutely miffed by it. Now Drew McIntyre gets the win, does it matter? He was already beaten by Dolph Ziggler. He wants to talk about, well, nobody can remain undefeated. Not even Andre the Giant, nor The Undertaker, nor myself. Good for you, bro. Good for you. You just threw two legends under the bus, and you're talking about yourself in the same breath as an Andre the Giant and an Undertaker? What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? Little too much Scottish tea today? Huh? Fucking ridiculous, man. The fuck is he talking about? You lost to Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> Come on. At least The Undertaker lost to fucking Brock Lesnar. Andre the Giant lost to Hulk Hogan. You lost to Dolph fucking Ziggler on a random Monday Night Raw. That's on par with Andre being pinned at WrestleMania, The Undertaker's streak being fucking broken. It's not even worth being in the same breath. Fucking ridiculous comparison. The match was all right. Ziggler and him seemed to have good chemistry. The biggest story here coming out of this thing was after the match, Drew McIntyre gets the win and then continues to viciously beat down Dolph Ziggler on the outside, the most vicious of which being a Claymore kick to the side of Ziggler's head, which was firmly placed against the LED board side of the ring apron, which looked absolutely vicious. And McIntyre looked like a psychopath on his way out, and Ziggler laid out completely. Looked like he was messed up, and this part of the segment I did enjoy. I'm just afraid of where they're going to go with this. I don't want to see Ziggler versus McIntyre every week for the next six weeks like they did with Ziggler and Rollins. It's just got to come to an end quickly, and then please elevate Drew McIntyre away from these guys and up on the mountaintop where he belongs because the guy is fucking money. He's absolutely money and he don't need to be talking ridiculous promos written by these writers where he's talking about Andre and The Undertaker. He needs to just go out there and be Drew McIntyre, Claymore kick everybody in the fucking face and take that Universal Championship and bring it back to the show. Please. Universal Championship has been missing ever since Survivor Series. Nowhere to be fucking found. And nobody seems to care. 
But if they care about the Mixed Match Challenge, that show is fucking cursed. I'm so glad I decided not to cover it this year. We covered it for the most part last year. But this year has been the most cursed and the most ridiculous incarnation of this show that will probably go down in its history. And I hope this is the last year of the show. First of all, I don't know why it's still fucking going on. Why is it so long this year? Pretty sure they wrapped this shit up last year in just a couple of weeks. This, this... Yeah, it just seems like it just keeps going and going and it just won't come to an end. And every week somebody's being replaced by somebody else to the point where the fact that the winner of this thing, the Mixed Match Challenge, is getting the number 30 spot in the Royal Rumble is a fucking joke. I didn't like it to begin with, but at least you had people in there like AJ Styles, Finn Balor, people that might you might actually want to see at the number 30 spot. But no, now... Who do you got to choose from? Jinder Mahal? Apollo Crews? Give me a break. That stipulation should have never been added as a reward to the Mixed Match Challenge. They just didn't want to shell out any more money to any type of a fucking charity, I bet. What a joke. So this match was only to promote that and to let the world know that Apollo Crews was now taking the place of an injured Finn Balor. Isn't that great news? Bailey... And Apollo Crews are now partners. Who the fuck cares? Nor do I care about the Boston connection. It's absolutely ridiculous. Bailey gives Alicia Fox a Bailey to belly for the win. The rest of the match I did not pay any attention to. I didn't give a shit about Apollo Crews throwing Sasha Banks around on the outside like a cruise missile. I didn't care about Corey Graves and his ridiculous commentary still trying to paint Sasha Banks as the villain being jealous and trying to steal the spotlight from Bailey. I'm tired of it. I'm so tired of it. We had an interview with Bane Ambrose in the back, sans mask, talking to Charlie Caruso. He got mad she called him a lunatic fringe. All of a sudden, he doesn't like that term. I don't give a shit about that too much, but he's like, don't call me that. Gives a shit. Started talking shit about Seth Rollins, and then Charlie Caruso had to bring up, oh, about the Roman Reigns situation, blah, blah. And he was like, oh, Roman, who cares? And the crowd was like, but he's right. Who cares? We shouldn't care. Leave the fucking man alone. Why are we still talking about him? Let him go get better. When he's ready to come back, then let's talk about him. But for now, let's just leave him off TV. Why are we still using him? It's lazy. And it's kind of senseless. Charlie Caruso pushes. She's like, no, we really we really need your, your comments. We really want to know what you think about this. And I'm like, think about fucking what? Think about what... What are we talking about? Roman and leukemia? What do we want to know what he's thinking about? And then we have to watch this like four or five minute long rehashing of the entire history that has been going on between Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. And of course they had to put a solid minute of Roman Reigns giving his leukemia speech. Again. Why? I don't know. And then they come back to Dean Ambrose in the back after watching all of this shit. She's waiting for his response and the guy just fucking walks away. I cannot stand this show. I really cannot. We got Elias in the ring. And here we have another segment with multiple, multiple negatives. None the least of which is the old milk dud, Bobby Trashley. Leo Rush finally gets his minute in the spotlight. Leo Rush is a fantastic wrestler, by the way. You wouldn't know that if you watched Monday Night Raw tonight. It's Leo Rush's big moment. He's coming down, and Corey Graves has got to jump all, a step all over it. Michael Cole's like, oh, look, it's Leo Rush. And then Graves, oh, no, but look at the almighty. What a human being. Notice how I said that in a Vince McMahon voice because that was definitely a Vince McMahon line being fed to him. What a human being! Awful. The almighty fucking milk dud is what he is. And then you have Leo Rush go out there and absolutely embarrass himself because he is way better than everything you've seen tonight. Only to end up getting the win... In dastardly fashion, Bobby Lashley wants to get involved. And because Heath Slater is the referee, 
and is apparently in the back pocket of Constable Dickhead, he allows the interference to go on since Bobby Lashley is Corbin's boy. And Leo Rush gets the win over Elias in under five minutes and did nothing to show you or the world why he is fucking great. Here was a moment to create a star in Leo Rush. If you were going to let him get a win over Elias tonight, why not in the process create a new star? If you were to let Leo Rush go out there and wrestle the way I know the kid can wrestle, that could have been the match of the night. Might have been the match of the year, considering every fucking thing we've been seeing on Monday Night Raw. All I'm saying is, that guy could definitely give Seth Rollins a run for his money as match of the night candidate for Monday Night Raw. But Leo Rush was made to look like a fucking joke. Bobby Lashley is made to look like the fucking star, and Elias ends up on his back getting his ass beat once again. And do you give a shit? I certainly don't. (sighs) Fucking awful. Ronda Rousey and Nia Jax face-to-face, moderated for some reason by Alexa Bliss. I guess Vince McMahon just needs to see her biscuit butt walk down to the ring every fucking night past the gorilla position because there's no reason for her to be involved. I don't give a shit that Corbin made her the general manager. This was a face-to-face between champion and challenger that did not need moderation. That's a contract signing, which we already fucking did. But now we're doing something that echoes the same exact thing, only without the table and the contract assigned. This face-to-face, and Nia Jax with a fucking promo that just wouldn't end, and she just did nothing but stare at her fist. I was wondering if she had a picture of a hot dog, or maybe a hamburger, or maybe a nice Hawaiian dish of some sort, posted on her fucking fist since she couldn't take her eyes off it the entire time. Or perhaps she had her entire fucking dialogue written on the top side of her fucking hand so she didn't forget a word that Vince McMahon wanted her to say. What was with the constant staring of the fist? Is she so enthralled with her own fist that now she can do nothing but stare at it instead of talking to the fans, looking at the camera, making eye contact? No. And then she wants to scream, MINE! Mine again with the fucking seagulls from fucking Finding Nemo, right? Or whatever the fuck it was. Mine, mine, mine. That fucking title should never be hers, and I don't ever want to fucking see it around her waist. Never again. The Nia Jax train has left the fucking station, and I am glad that I didn't jump on it. I almost did. I had hope for this girl. But coming to this point in her career, I'm seeing that starting to see there is no hope. At least she does not have a fraction of the charisma of The Rock or The Usos or any of the other Samoan superstars that are just filled throughout the world of professional wrestling. Tama Tonga, all the way across the Indies. If you're a Samoan, you got charisma, you got talent. Nia Jax does not have charisma. Nia Jax cannot deliver a promo. She is awful. Awful. In the ring, she is awful. She does nothing but hurt people. Hurt people to the point where you got Ember Moon's fiance going out there calling her an unsafe idiot on Twitter in a tweet that has since been deleted. Can you argue with the guy up until this point? Charlotte Flair. Bailey, Zelina Vega, Becky Lynch, Ember Moon. These girls will tell you, unsafe moron might not be too off the mark. None of this mattered. The only thing I liked about this is that Ronda Rousey came out and she didn't waste no time. She was like, listen, I ain't here to play any fucking games. I'm here to fight. She charged the ring and then it became... A two-on-one situation in which Ember Moon came to her rescue. We all know how I feel about this. This all of a sudden unnecessary and nonsensical pairing of Ember Moon with Ronda Rousey as if these girls grew up together or some shit makes no sense. Ember Moon is merely filling in 
for the Shayna Baszler role because Baszler is not on the main roster. This is where she would be, and they have nobody else to put there that can be a viable challenge to Nia Jax or Tamina. Tamina is not even a challenge. Watching Ember Moon tonight wrestle Tamina was like watching her wrestle a cardboard box. Awful. Terrible. And that's what we transitioned into after this stupid face-to-face, which was unnecessary. Didn't get me any more hype for the women's title match. I wasn't hype about it at all, and that's mostly because it involves Nia Jax. And we all know Ronda Rousey's going to win, so let's just get this over with and move on. But then we had to see Ember Moon defeat Tamina. At least Ember Moon won. I'll take that. The announcers talked about the card. That's when they made the announcement that Elias versus Lashley would be a ladder match with a guitar hanging over the ring. He said, here's an interesting thing. Michael Cole claims this was breaking news. This is breaking news, right? As if it's coming into his headset right fucking now. But then the idiot had to go back to the desk and take the script. He said, I want to take my script because I want to get this right. That's the only thing you got right was the reading of that line all night long. Everything else about Monday Night Raw was wrong. But that was breaking news. At that moment. It just broke. But it was on the fucking script. I hate this show. We had the promo package for Lars Sullivan. At this point, no matter what show he ends up on, this guy is in a whole lot of trouble. And then we had the nonsensical... TLC match to get you guys hyped for the TLC pay-per-view. Which I'm not really that excited for with the exception of the SmackDown Live Women's Championship triple threat TLC match. Which will probably main event the show and I'm fine with that because everything else on this show doesn't mean two shits to me. Absolutely terrible. While this near half an hour long match wasn't really that bad, probably the best performance by Baron Corbin to date on Monday Night Raw, you could attribute that 100% to the architect Seth Rollins being able to wrestle with a broomstick comes in handy when you are in there with somebody who's just been god-awful. This guy never reached his full potential. He doesn't wrestle that well. He's gotten mildly better. But his character and his outfit and everything about him just just makes me not want to see him. And the fact that he's in the main event, once again, as this interim general manager, or however the fuck general manager elect, I, I just am completely disinterested. And this TLC match suffered from the fact that Baron Corbin was in it. Other than that, it was actually a very entertaining match. Things really picked up when Seth Rollins placed Baron Corbin on a table outside the ring and then hit a beautiful frog splash from the top rope. Got the crowd involved, got them to actually chant holy shit for once on a Monday Night Raw. Rollins, here's where things get interesting, climbs a ladder, but as he gets to the top, Heath Slater, who was once again inserted into the referee's role by Baron Corbin to obviously give him the advantage and make all of us think that Corbin was going to screw Seth Rollins out of the IC title tonight. Thank God that didn't happen. But this was the moment, the red herring of the night, where Slater pushed the ladder, causing Seth Rollins to fall. He then goes to the outside, gets Baron Corbin back to life, and then back into the ring. Corbin, with not enough strength to really hurry up that ladder and did not get to the top of the ladder before Seth Rollins would be able to make it back into the ring, grab him by both legs and then execute a buckle bomb into a table that was set up into the corner and then have Seth Rollins go up to the top and grab that championship, which I knew wasn't going anywhere, only to have Darth (laughs) Ambrose or or uh, Bane Ambrose, whatever you want to call him, come out and they have a little stare down from across the arena. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was for the third straight week, the worst fucking Raw of 2018. Maybe it is for the 48th straight week. Because this show is just fucking terrible. SmackDown Live actually will probably be better as usual, but I'm going into it with a kind of a negative mindset because the best thing you got for the Usos and the bar 
and the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship is a fucking rap battle? I'm not interested. But we're going to have to tune in and see what happens tomorrow night on the blue brand because the red brand just makes me hate professional wrestling. And it takes that little bit extra from the blue brand and then watching the gold brand, the gold standard in pro wrestling, NXT, to make me feel the way I should feel when we're talking about professional wrestling. Thank you, Sledgeheads, my brothers and sisters of the Sledgehammer Club, for being here with me tonight on another fantastic episode of the Monday Night Raw Review. This episode is fantastic. Not Monday Night Raw's episode. This episode of this show, but you guys already know that. That's why you come to me for the absolute best coverage. No holding shit back. No sugarcoating. 100% hammer coming down. I don't give a shit who you are. And I love you guys for being here with me. Do not forget to support this show any way you feel fit. You can support us at patreon.com slash sledgehammer TV. We have the Patreon page up there. New videos and exclusive videos coming to that Patreon page as soon as I figure out how to do it. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I'm having a hard time getting private videos up there. But we're going to work past that and it will be there and it will be worth whatever it is you guys decide to pledge to us and become our pledge hammers here at the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show on Patreon. Then there is Audible. Audible is our official sponsor. You can go to audibletrial.com slash sledgehammer TV today and redeem one free audiobook if you sign up for the 30-day absolutely free trial, if you have already jumped on board of an Audible subscription via somebody else you support or you got it from Spotify or somewhere, please take this link and put it in your Christmas cards. Give it away as a gift to your friends. Hey, guys, get a free gift. Get a free book of your choosing on the house, courtesy of my favorite wrestling show. And while you do that, send them over here so that just like you guys, they can hit that subscribe button right now and become one of the thousand plus that know that this is the place to be when you want your wrestling hard-edged and straight-edged and 100% full of truth and fun and laughter. And that's what we do here. And I love to have you guys here every single week. Also, if you enjoyed today's episode, you like my Drew McIntyre impression, you love anything I did here today, hit that like button down there, smash that thumbs up, make sure it swells up all nice and blue this way. I know you enjoy the show and the whole damn world knows that you enjoy the show and that they should come on board and enjoy this show too. You can also share the show with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they know that Monday Night Raw is an absolutely piece of trash program and they need a place to go to call home and feel like real wrestling fans again. You know where to direct them and that, my friends, is right here. Thank you, as always, for all the support. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, Radio, or Spotify, thank you for your support there as well. Don't forget to give us a like or a rating or whatever it is you got to do over there to show your support. But most importantly, get your asses over here to Sledgehammer TV on YouTube and join us over here where the brotherhood and the family is growing by the day. And I can't wait until you become a part of it. My name is Nick Nightmare, and this is my team, Thor, the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, and the wrestling god of thunder, your hammer of reality, and his tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue the Snowball Microphone. Thank you guys. As always, you are the most important members of my team, because without you, this show is is absolutely nothing. Don't forget to be here with us all week long as House of Glory this weekend is coming at us with their eighth year anniversary show. I am going to be there and on our preview and prediction show for House of Glory 8, I'm going to unveil some very special news that some of you might not know if you're not following me on Twitter or Instagram like you should. So make sure you keep your eye out for that. And as always, the preview and predictions for TLC as well as Sunday night, we will be here for you guys with the hammering of the TLC pay-per-view 
event. That, my friends, is going to do it, and we are out of here, and we will see you next time right here on your new favorite wrestling show, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, right here on Sledgehammer TV. I don't know why that voice just came out. It just did. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. (laughs) 